Father Tom. Our gathering hymn is Take Up Your Cross. I will place the key of the house of David on the 
Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot, to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
went to the region of Caesarea Philippi and asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said to reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Pundits who call people who rob Peter to pay Paul repeat offenders, which is appalling. <laughs> but those apostolic pious pair, Peter and Paul, proudly profess the pinnacle of our faith in the readings we just heard. In an expression that is echoed at the end of every Eucharistic prayer, St. Paul prays God as the essence of everything, through him, with him, in him, from him, for him, all things are. He is everything in itself that is all about God. To that, St. Peter adds that great proclamation about Jesus. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But in order to take advantage of that awesome power that is present in the proclamation of those two great apostles, Peter and Paul, we must ponder their placement not only in sacred scripture, but also in the listing that is in our lectionary of the lessons we hear week after week. And so first, a general recap about how the church works this for us. Advent readings ready us to welcome the Lord, whether it's at his second coming or at our own death, whichever comes first, and they help us welcome him at his first coming. Christmas readings bring us from his birth to the beginning of his public ministry at his baptism. Lenten readings help us to turn away from sin so that we can die with Christ and rise with him to the new life that we exalt throughout Easter time's readings. How the faith of the church is kept alive and its leaders and its sacraments and all those different things. And then there's ordinary time. Ordinary from the term ordinal or county. Ordinary time, which we're in right now, gives us a sequential synopsis of everything our Savior did in his gradual self-revelation to us of who he is and what it's all about. Today's unique in that ordinary time revealing of scripture because I hope you know we have a three-year cycle next year hear Mark's Gospel, last year we heard Luke's Gospel, and today's the apex of St. Matthew's Gospel. In fact, it's a two-part Gospel. Got to come back next week to hear the end. Two-part because today, after witnessing Jesus preach, teach, cure the sick, raise the dead, walk on water, feed the multitudes, calm the storm, do this and do that, or all those things, he finally turns to his apostles and says, what's my real identity? Who am I? Only Simon Peter reveals the truth. Only Simon Peter 
does not look back to the past, that you're someone from the past, or you're better than all those guys we knew from the past. No, you are something that has never happened before. Somehow, it was revealed to him that Jesus is God made man, the Word made flesh. Jesus is both human and divine. This has never happened before. He's not just something from the past. He is a totally new reality. God and the human race made one in that miracle we call the Incarnation. How, when, why, where the Father revealed that to Peter, we have no idea. Or as we also heard St. Paul say, no one knows the mind of God. No one understands his ways. Today, Peter gets it. However, as we're going to hear next week, spoiler alert, St. Peter still has a lot more to learn. Because he's going to be slammed with a satanic slur that must have scarred him terribly. And the reason he gains that scolding from the Lord is because he tries to stop him from going to Jerusalem. For what Peter cannot imagine could, in anyone's wildest dreams, be God's plan. No way are you going to suffer and die on a cross. That makes no sense. Peter still had things to learn. Likewise, we often do not understand God's will. Why God permits what he permits, doesn't do what we say or pray for. Why things happen, we don't know. But like St. Peter, we can also gain all the things we need to get through this life that we don't understand if we do something very important, which is what he did. He was open to the revelation of how God is going to help us to understand things. And there are four. If we accept that Jesus is both God and man, not just a prophet, he is God in human form, that the church he founded on the rock of St. Peter's faith is the means by which he is going to save us because it is his body in the world today. That the sacred scriptures that we proclaim and hear and read and so on, they are not fairy tales. They are the God's honest revealed truth. And the sacraments we celebrate are not just two customs. They are the very means by which God comes to us and enters into us to get us through life. And I will be a Paul if I have to repeat myself. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seen at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Relying on God's unfailing promises, we offer all our needs. May the church, founded on Peter's confession of faith, be restored to the oneness for which Jesus fervently prayed. May St. Peter's 265th successor, Pope Francis, help us overcome every obstacle to unity. We pray. May all in authority resist every temptation to abuse power and firmly root out corruption, crime, and terrorism. May every family, parish, community, and country be healed of all divisions, we pray. May all who know the gift of marriage and friendship remain constant in love through every trial. May those separated from loved ones by death take comfort in the promise of the resurrection, we pray. May all who find life burdensome find hope and prayer. May the underemployed and unemployed find jobs. May the unborn and their parents rejoice in new life. May the sick and dying find comfort and hope, we pray. May the intentions listed 
in our parish prayer book, those offered for those in the military and the missions, and for an increase in vocations, find favor with God, we pray. May our parish be enriched by the saintly intention of our patroness, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, as we commemorate the 246th anniversary of her birth this Friday, we pray. May all who recently died, and Richard Lentz Cole Jr., and all the dead, fully enter the kingdom of God, of Jesus, enter the kingdom of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the true and living God, we pray. Eternal, all-powerful, ever-living God, hear our humble prayers and grant all we need through Christ our Lord. So we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures in heaven there sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Mm -hmm. Celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection and offer you the bread of life. 
life in the chapels of salvation, giving thanks that you have helped us, Lord, to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Elizabeth and Seton, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Please be seated. Just a reminder to those, especially those watching Mass recording, register for all religious formation classes as soon as possible. Offer your help to make all that happen. We still don't know exactly how we're going to pull all that off or how it's going, what form it's going to take. So lots of hands will be needed, but make sure everyone is registered. Team Ministry Movie Night continues in a Holy Family Room starting at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. We're thanks to all who have been praying for and all who work so hard to make the ordination of our five most priests this morning so beautiful. Let us keep them in our prayers and be ordained. If you've never watched one, go on to the diocesan website and please check out some of the things that went on this morning. It's beautiful ordination, right? Part of it was the blessing of the oils which we will receive and place into the Ambry case in next weekend's Masses. Finally, usually that's done on Monday before Easter. Things are finally getting back into somewhat normal, thanks be to God. It is urgent to me that we have all of your correct contact information. As some of you may know, uh, there seems to have been a power surge here. Uh, CenturyLink was down with phones. We've only got it partially back on on Thursday, and still we can't retrieve messages all the time, so it's been very spotty trying to get messages from you and return them to you and so on. Email has been working better. I say that because we're almost finished with confirmations and first communions, which means I'll be looking at the mass schedule more than willing to celebrate two on Saturday evening, but the times may change. They don't need to be as far apart as they are right now. If the numbers are requiring the second mass so that we don't go over 100 and people can come, love celebrating mass. I can do it all day long, so it doesn't bother me at all. I love it. But if we don't need it, there's no sense in doing it. We need to, there may be some adjustments in the schedule, so always check before you come. That's also true during the week. All probability after Labor Day, the weekday mass schedule will also be adjusted. So always go on the website or contact us if you can get through on the phone first before coming. It's been a very different first Holy Communion year, Confirmation year. Thanks to all who have made it as special as it has been. But you know, your parents wrote to me to say that they're very disappointed that I didn't ask questions this year. So I have to ask you three questions, okay? Ready? First question, what's your first name? Thomas. What's my first name? Father Thomas. What's the best name in the whole world? Thomas. <laughs> it's a great name, right? So there you pass the test, and now you're all ready. That was easy, right? So what question should I ask them? Don't you have to know all <laughs> Do that to them. Before you receive Holy Communion for the first time, we have the honor of imparting a special blessing on you, and so please join me. Loving God, we ask your blessing upon this child whom you will feed and nourish at your holy altar for the first time. May he come to this banquet often to be one with your church and to receive your son Jesus, who is overjoyed to bless and embrace us little ones. As we pledge ourselves to be living examples of the faith to him, so may you use him to teach us how to accept the kingdom of God as a little child through Christ our Lord. Let us offer him our congratulations.